I wanted to do a fun testing new makeup video today because I have found a new favorite foundation and you guys need to see it in action and I also just got in a new palette from Anastasia. I don't know if this was supposed to come out. I ordered it off of Belk. It's called Spice. You've probably seen the sneak peeks on Tremu, but yeah, I was able to get my hands on it. I don't think it's like officially out yet, but I wanted to go ahead and try it. So let's go ahead and get into this video here. We're going to start with a primer here. I just found this at Ulta the other day, but NYX came out with this new face glue primer that literally looks like a glue bottle. It says it's 24 hour wear makeup gripping primer. I'm a little concerned with the formula because it says it has maple syrup in the formula, which definitely has me a little concerned. I don't know if I want maple syrup on my face, but they are definitely advertising that ingredient to be grippy, which of course, maple syrup is pretty sticky. It says it's non-comedogenic though, and it's supposed to be breathable all day for a soft focus finish. And looking at the actual written ingredients, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it says sugar maple extract, so I'm sure it's not like legit maple syrup. I don't know. There's a lot of ingredients here. Let's try this out because I'm definitely interested. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to twist that off. So this tip comes off and then we'll go ahead and put this on the face. Now I am trying a new primer with the one size foundation because I already know that I love the one size. So I want to see how this works with it. And I'm just going to apply this all over. I definitely feel a little tacked to it, but it's nothing like the e.l.f. sticky primer. But I can feel that it has a little grip to it as it dries down. It does feel a little tight on the skin, but I feel like the skin looks nice and plump from it. Now, I am so excited to test this with you guys today, but I have already used this a couple times, and I am really loving this one. This is the new foundation coming from One Size. It should be out very, very soon. I think Sephora has, like... A peak of it but you can't buy it quite yet but it should be launching this month I just got it a little early to test it out and I have been loving it as someone with oily skin I've even seen people with dry skin that have been enjoying this one too but this is called turn up the base a full beat liquid foundation it's their first kind of full coverage liquid foundation on the market one size has done like their BB balm and they also have their like powder foundation that's pretty popular but I was so excited when I saw they were coming out with a new more liquidy foundation because I feel like the BB balm is a little thick this is not thick whatsoever, even for full coverage. So this is going to be $44, and it claims to be long wear, waterproof, sweatproof for full coverage in max comfort without clogging pores. So let's go ahead and get this on the face. I'm going to use the shade Light 10 R because I do have a little bit of more cooler undertones, and the R is for red, so I have a little more red in my skin. All you really need is like one pump of the product. It might be just a little bit light for me because I do have some tan on right now, but let's just get this spread onto the skin. Again, this is full coverage, but it's not heavy at all. It's actually quite lightweight and thin on the skin, which is so comfortable. I've just been so impressed with this every time I have tried it out and I need to get a more tan shade for like self tan but this is just what I was sent so we're gonna make this work. Actually I didn't even use that full pump and we are fully covered. This just looks so nice on the skin. It's full coverage without being heavy, cakey. It just looks perfected. Something else you'll notice about the foundation is like it's supposed to keep you matte, but it doesn't look like super matte. So I feel like dry skin can also get away with this, but somehow it does control the oils all day. And I can attest to the fact that it's definitely sweat proof too, because when I first did a wear test on this foundation, I have it posted on, I think Instagram. I was like deep cleaning my house, dripping sweat, and I just had to like obviously clean up the droplets of sweat on my face, but the foundation was still intact and it didn't even look that greasy after eight hours. So I was definitely impressed with it. And I think it's honestly gonna be like my new go-to holy grail foundation, which I definitely do not say very often. You guys know I don't really rave about certain foundations very much, but this might have replaced Estee Lauder Double Wear for me. So like I was mentioning earlier, I picked up this new Spice palette from Anastasia. It's a new mini palette. Now, people are not very happy with this because of the name. When you hear Spice, you're thinking more like what? Like pumpkin spice, right? Like more autumnal warm colors, but 
I mean, it's a pretty basic palette, but I love these colors. So I went ahead and picked this up because this is like literally the shades I wear for every day. I like to play with color here and there, but neutrals are my thing. And some of these shimmers just look insanely beautiful. I've always been a fan of Anastasia's formula. So I'm going to go ahead and insert swatches for you. We can see how it looks. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to take this middle top shade here. This is, they don't have names, so we're not gonna go with the names. This is a matte with some subtle glitter in there. I don't always love that kind of effect because it just kind of seems a little pointless to me. But let's go ahead and put this in the crease. I will say this formula, it's very powdery, which I do feel like Anastasia shadows do tend to be a little powdery for their mattes, but I don't know, it feels a little bit dry from what I am used to. And yeah, the powder kick up is quite a bit, but yeah. They're kind of notorious for that. You just have to tap your brush off to make sure you get all that product off. Overall, the color looks really nice. Just a really nice neutral brown for the crease. Let's take this darker matte. It's kind of a warm brown in the outer corner. Maybe this is supposed to be the spice of the palette. This shade actually had way less fallout. It seems like the glittery ones are the ones that are very powdery. But this shade is actually blending really nice. Let's take this shade here. This is another kind of sparkly matte. It's a little bit lighter than the other brown we used. And I'm going to use this on my lower lash line to kind of smoke that out. And then we can try one of the shimmers or maybe a couple. Let's actually go in with this bronze. Ooh, that's actually really creamy. I'm going to put this on like the middle part of the eye these are definitely more glittery than some of their other shimmers i feel like like i honestly think it's a better shimmer formula than i've seen from anastasia which is weird because i feel like the mattes i don't know if i'm in love with but i really like these glittery shimmers yeah that is stunning that feels like an indie shimmer to me very pretty and by indie i just mean indie brand like the independently owned brands that kind of aren't sold at sephora and ulta usually have some really good formulas and i feature a lot of those kind of palettes on my channel quite often let's take a brush and go in with this lighter kind of pink here and put this in the inner corner Definitely not as pink as I thought. It's actually looking really similar to the bronze. Like, I honestly thought that would look more different than it does. It's just slightly lighter and very slightly more peach with a little bit of maybe a greenish gold sparkle to it. I definitely think these glitters are better applied with your fingers just to kind of melt them a little bit more. But yeah, I was expecting a little bit more difference with the shimmers. Let me swatch them kind of side by side here they kind of remind me if you do them more subtly of like the urban decay moon dust with how sparkly they are but they're more creamy but yeah they're very like subtle differences i feel like this one is the most different of the three and of course there is just like a nice bronze too that's not super glittery so overall, I like the look that we got with the palette, and I think the shimmers are pretty, maybe a little too repetitive. The matte's a little powdery, but I want to see kind of how this wears. It's definitely a look I would wear quite often, though. Like, this is a really good, just like, glam neutral palette to, eat, to reach into. I am going to add some concealer to clean this up. I haven't used this since it launched, so I figured I should try it. Too Faced sent over a new bottle of their Ethereal Light Illuminating Concealer. So I figured I would put this on. I don't know if this is going to be too dark, though, because it kind of has a peachy undertone. Um, yeah, this isn't really my exact shade, but I really wanted to try this out again and see how I feel about it because I'm not big on illuminating things. This is in graham cracker, but I think I do need a shade lighter. I am going to let that concealer set just a minute while I line my waterline here with just a nude eyeliner. And then we can blend that out. I can definitely see this concealer isn't like the most high coverage. They're born this way is probably going to be more of that full coverage look. This one's a little bit more 
medium coverage and I definitely see the glow which we will be setting with powder so just taking my little beauty blender puff and I'm using the very last of my um what is it called Givenchy rose setting powder that they discontinued unfortunately and I'm just trying to use it up this is literally all I have left is this cap full um, I need to do a quick little short to empties video very soon. The rest of my face is getting set with the Huda powder in pound cake. But I do like to set my foundation after applying, usually when I'm not working with too many cream products. If I'm doing cream bronzer and cream blush, then I might wait, but I think I'm gonna do a powder bronzer today. I don't really have any new ones to test. For mascara, I'm going to break into some of my new ones, and I just got this one from Polite Society. I did try many of this, and I thought it was actually a really good formula. I know no one really talks about Polite Society. It is at Ulta. It's by the old owners of Too Faced, but, like, this mascara is so lengthening. I think it does a really good job, and I think the line has some pretty decent products. Some stuff... Yeah, a little boring, but this mascara I think is one of their best products. So you could see like how long that made my lashes look. It's really nice and separating too, so you can continue to build it up without it getting too clumpy. I am going to use my Fenty bronzer today. I'm using a little bit of a darker shade. This is usually my self tan one in Private Island 03, just so we can kind of even out the color. But this um, one size light 10 R shade should be my normal shade most days when I don't have a little self tan on but I just had a photo shoot a couple days ago so I'm still a little bronzed so with this we're just gonna apply over on the cheekbones here this is a really pretty warm bronzer I really love the Fenty formula and have since they came out it's been years now I feel like but they just have a really good nice matte bronzer now I did get sent these Catrice blushes the other day they're pretty new I really enjoy Catrice products. They are so affordable. Most of all their stuff is under $10. I did do a fun sponsored video with them for TikTok, but this is not sponsored. This portion is not at all. I just really love these and I want to show you guys as well. This color is my favorite. This is Peach Passion and these are $7. They come with a cream and a powder. I like to layer them together and seriously, like these... I swear they feel like high-end like you wouldn't know the difference if you didn't see the packaging now I'm oily and if you are oily as well I suggest going in with the cream first so just taking my blush brush here this is a really pretty cream formula on its own it does not disrupt the foundation but you can see it does give like a subtle glow and this is such a nice natural peach color but like that looks beautiful even on its own and if you do have more dry skin, you can always do the powder first and the cream on top, kind of like the Patrick Ta way, to add in a little more glow to the skin. But I find that I get the most longevity doing the powder on top, and that's really going to lock in that blush, and it will last all day on the skin. So let's go ahead and do that on top. Adds a little bit of pigment as well, but ugh, I'm obsessed with this color. So pretty. If you're wondering like where can I get Catrice, I usually find their stuff on Amazon or their website. They used to be sold at Ulta back in the day. I think they're sister brands with Essence which is still sold at Ulta but you can just get it off of Amazon if you want. It's super easy. wish they were still at Ulta but I just feel like they're not always super talked about even though they have amazing products. Now for the lips, I recently got a package with a bunch of the Kaja Juicy Glass. These are their lip oils. And I had one of these that I had purchased from Macy's. It was probably a couple months ago. Loved the formula, so I was so excited they sent the full range. So I thought we could do this today. I feel like they have a really nice lip oil formula that's very comparable to like Dior. But Kaja is pretty affordable. I'm just starting with lip liner. I'm just using Natasha Denona Nina. I just like having a clean line and I like to overline just a little bit on them. And then we'll take the lip oil in Rose Hip Spritz. 
these are fun too they have the little shaky ball in the packaging so they make some fun kind of noise and this just looks like a glassy kind of light pink yeah this one doesn't have like a ton of pigment itself but paired with the lip oil i think it'll be perfect just look like how juicy does that look it looks so pretty it has a nice thick formula but it's nice and slippery too these are so good and they're under $20. Now I am going to lock this in with my one size setting spray. I do use setting spray nearly every day just because I feel like when you're oily like me, you got to do all the measures, the powder, the setting sprays, the primers. So we'll spray this and it will feel like hairspray or not really feel, it's not sticky or anything, but it like locks it down like hairspray. So that is our finished makeup very beautiful definitely something i would wear for even like a full glam photo shoot just like every day i think it looks stunning sometimes testing out new makeup you never know how the end result is going to be if you have some iffy products but i feel like since i knew some of these were winners i feel like it came out really good the only things i'm kind of questioning so far is the anastasia palette and the Too Faced concealer so i'm definitely going to be doing a wear test you guys know i always like to show you guys how it looks at the end of the day so you can really get a feel for how the products hold up if the one size foundation is truly long wearing is it sweat proof i'm going to show you guys how we look i do very minimal touch-ups it's normal for me to touch up with powder throughout the day so i may touch up like one time just throwing a little powder on to blot but i will see you guys a bit later we can see how the products have worn seven hours later i am back i just want to like put a little more lip color on I took like all of it off when I ate lunch and then I just never put it back on <laughs> but luckily that wasn't really a testing product because I already really enjoy it but here is what we are looking like I actually did not touch up at all today I haven't had time to put any powder on or anything I've been kind of super busy today but we are looking like a little bit oily in the t-zone especially here but it hasn't broken up the foundation or anything and it's not it's really not that bad for seven hours for me after just a slight powdering i feel like it looks really great and i could still wear this makeup for many more hours let's talk about our little primer foundation combo we use the nyx face glue with the one size today now i will say i've used the one size a few times now i think it actually held up the best when i didn't even use the primer i just did skincare I feel like today it looks a little bit more greasy with this primer. Sometimes primers can make things more greasy. And while I think it does a good job of gripping, it does add a little bit of shine as well. So it may not be the number one choice for oily skin. I feel like I would rather go for more of a mattifying primer over this. But I've had pretty great luck with the one size. I think the last time I used it with actually the Huda Easy Blur as well and that one got just a tiny bit shiny too so I feel like this honestly works better without a primer or maybe I should just use it with a mattifying one but like this has held up really well in my opinion it still looks really full coverage without breaking apart on the face sometimes when I do get like super greasy and my foundation will just break down but this one just got a little bit shiny but it doesn't like wear off of the skin with that I honestly think it could work for pretty much any skin type I don't think it's just for oily skin and since we're talking about complexion, as far as the Too Faced concealer goes, this definitely is not my favorite from them. I can definitely see darkness coming through under the eyes. It's not the most long wearing. It's held up okay, but I definitely have better in my collection. I probably won't reach for this one again. And then I'm sure you guys are wondering of my thoughts on the Spice palette here. I will say I was a little disappointed in some of the sparkly mattes. Those seem to have such bad fallout and the shimmers are pretty similar within the palette i do think this is a gorgeous look and it's held really nicely and it hasn't creased at all but sometimes creamy shadows like this can crease up on me but this does look nice for 29 dollars. i think this is a decent palette i don't think it's the best ever i don't think you have to run out and get this i definitely have other palettes that can do a similar job but i mean it's not it's not too shabby i like the look it applied fine. I just wish it had a little less fallout and maybe a little bit more differences in between these shimmer shades in the palette. But it's cute. If you're a neutral lover, this is such a pretty look. But I feel like a lot of the looks are going to look very similar. 
you're not gonna build like a ton of depth with this one the polite society mascara is a win i think you guys should check this one out it has really nice length and separates really good there was no smearing or transferring or any weird flakes it's such a good formula and i'm also loving this catrice blush especially this shade Although I did drop this and now this part doesn't want to stay on, which is kind of annoying. So cheap packaging, but it is $7. The formula though, it feels so high end. The blush still looks amazing on the cheeks. I am obsessed with this color. It is so good. And the Kaja lip oils. I already talked about that. I really like these and would recommend. So yeah, mostly we're just trying out a few new things, not a whole lot. I mostly kind of just wanted to focus on the one size foundation and the Too Faced, but let me know your thoughts on these things. I highly recommend checking out this one size foundation when it comes out. I am just so, so, so impressed with it. With all the new drops there's been lately, I feel like there's a new foundation every week. This really blew me away. But I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.